Predator's Anatomy Some terrifying things about one of the most dangerous creatures in the universe. Predators have been one of the most terrifying sci-fi villains to ever grace our screens since they first appeared in the titular 1987 movie Predator. They are typically shown as huge, intelligent, sentient humanoids with advanced technology, including active camouflage, directed energy weapons, and interplanetary travel. However, even though the Predator franchise has grown by leaps and bounds, there is so much more about them that is not commonly known to fans. Their anatomy and physical makeup are quite interesting and extremely different from humans, and there are various adaptations and iterations of their alien hunters. Here is your guide to Predator Anatomy 101. Are you a Predator fan? Keep watching! Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Exploring their basic physical structure, skin, skull, and bones. The Predator is a master hunter because of its distinctive physical structure, although fans might be unaware of a variety of details regarding its physical form. The alien threat that the movie Predator established in the cinematic universe would fuel filmmakers' fantasies for years to come. The Predator has crossed over with some of the most well-known movie monsters and superheroes in history, resulting in the creation of a franchise entirely its own. They have notably frequently engaged in combat, in particular with the alien series Xenomorphs. There are a number of Predator-related comic books, movies, books, and video games which have provided us with a lot of contradictory information regarding how they think and behave. However, let's take a look at their basic physical structure for some clarity on their makeup and physiology. As far as their skeletal structure is concerned, it is safe to say that human bones are smaller and weaker than the bones of the Predator. As indicated by the skull in the Predator's movie, they also appear to be white in hue. The Predators are frequently dismembered and even decapitated despite having harder bones, so they are obviously still vulnerable to being harmed by cutting objects. However, interestingly, when an engineer fractured the Predator Ahab's arm, it appeared to have mended on its own in a few days, proving that bones can recover well and much faster than the time it takes for human bones to recover post-suffering from a fracture. Even if their victims are fellow members of their own kind, the Predators like to keep their victims' bones, especially their heads. So, they have a special fondness for collecting skulls as trophies, giving bones important significance in their life and community. Coming to their skin and skin color, the type of Predator as well as the other elements affect the Predator's skin tone. The Jungle Hunter, one of the most well-known Predators in the franchise, has brownish skin. The Alpha Predator, who was most recently spotted in Predator Hunting Grounds is a white-skinned predator, so there is no one-color-fits-all situation. They all differ in accordance with their nature and the elements they dwell in. Most likely, their skin is also thicker than human skin, which helps it take gunshots and melee damage far better than humans ever can. Small spike-like appendages, which are scaled-down copies of the dreadlocks, are also present on the arms and chest. The predators love to hunt in warm climates and don't wear clothing on their skin in addition to their armor and cloak netting, showing that they are indeed savage if we are to believe that clothes signify modernity and civilization. As far as their stature is concerned, depending on the specific predator and its type, the predator stands between 6.7 to 7.7 feet tall. Shortly from the comic book Aliens vs. Predator, War was one of the prominent Yauchas who was approximately 6.6 .6 feet tall and thus was on the shorter side and got bullied for it, showing that being that short was not a common sight amongst the predators. The tallest known Yauja species, such as Upgrade, Infected and Gladiator can even reach heights of little more than 3 meters. With regards to their weight, although it's a little more difficult to estimate, the predator should weigh around 2 to 3 times the average person. As a result, the jungle hunter, who can be considered an average predator, is more than twice as heavy as Dutch, weighing in roughly at a whopping 250 kg. With so much mass, they have a significant strength and advantage in unarmed conflicts. 
Often, when weapons are lost, predators are seen to rely on brute strength, and that is because in a conflict with the average human, they are guaranteed a win, simply because of their stature and how much they weigh, along with their skin and bones being denser and, in comparison, more invulnerable than ours. How do their claws and mandibles work? The claws and mandibles are two very distinct features of the predator race, giving them their iconic reptilian-esque look. When it comes to their claws on each of their clawed hands, the predators have five fingers plus a thumb. Although they could defend themselves with their long black claws, they prefer to employ their wrist blades instead. More than two hands have been documented to be used by several predators. In fact, a genetic mutation might have created the four-armed predator from the Predator sequel comic. Further, even in the chilly Antarctic weather, the Yaucha choose not to wear gloves, showing that they are highly durable and resistant to extremes of temperature. Don't confuse their feet and claws, however. They are completely different. The predator's feet have five toes. However, because the fifth toe is on the side of the foot and frequently obscured, many wrongly believe that predators only have four toes. The toes have pointed nails just like their fingers. The predators prefer to hunt either in sandal-like footwear or while going barefoot. Yaoja are excellent swimmers due to their big feet. The marshes of Yaoja Prime combined with their feet's anatomy could possibly hold a clue to their reptilian origins. Their mandibles might be called gross and terrifying by many, and although the predators can terrify their prey with a clicking sound made by their crab claw-like appendages, they do not communicate with their mandibles. As evidenced by Grey Black from Predator 2, the tusks are breakable but do not regrow. At one point, the assassin predator bit off the head of a stargazer soldier with his mandibles, demonstrating the versatility of the tusks as a last-ditch defensive weapon which was absolutely incredible and at the same time horrifying to watch. The mandibles are kept closed in a neutral state, such as when they are wearing a mask. Can they regenerate body parts? The Yaoja have consistently displayed impressive feats of strength, speed, and toughness. They are seen most frequently tearing the spines and heads out of people. We have also seen instances of young Yaochas easily flipping a bison and crumpling heavy metal security doors with their bare hand. They can effortlessly avoid and dodge hails of military grade and futuristic firepower from close range thanks to a variety of impressive skills. In the movies, the Yaocha have also proven to be somewhat bullet resistant. The city hunter in Predator 2 took seven shots from a shotgun to the chest. It survived and carried on fighting, but afterwards had to treat itself with medical care. They have demonstrated comparable and even more remarkable accomplishments in several comic books and novels. However, their tendency to fight tooth and nail until the last breath means that they often sustain grievous injuries such as the loss of limbs. The big question is, what do they do then? Can they regenerate their limbs? Or are they like humans in this respect, having to live with an amputated limb for the rest of their lives? It is quite commonly seen that predators frequently battle while missing a limb. Yup, they are badass like that. They might lose an arm or even a tusk and keep fighting, despite the pain it might be causing them. Using the Medicomp, they can cauterize their wounds, which stops the bleeding by applying a bluish goo to the area, leaving them free to move around and use their remaining limbs to attack. Interestingly, predators have never been observed employing artificial or robotic limbs. They prefer being the way they are and many wear the scars of their battle injuries like medals of honor. However, there is the story of Yakita, a predator who lost her legs in battle and was seen using a wheelchair-like device in the Rage War trilogy. Thus, while the predators are prone to losing limbs, there are no solid examples of any of them accomplishing the feat of regenerating whole limbs, despite several predator literatures and comics making suggestions that the predators can regenerate their limbs. So while their broken bones and injuries heal faster, there are no documented instances of severed limbs regenerating as far as known predators are concerned. How does aging affect the predator? 
Most of the time, when we have seen predators in the movies, they have been hunting either by themselves or in small packs. The knowledge we have about predator civilization comes from other sources, most of which aren't regarded as canon and frequently contradict themselves. Given the risky lifestyles of the predators we have seen, it is difficult to envision any of them surviving for an extended period of time, often dying in battle, desiring honorable deaths at the hands of the most dangerous prey. So, it is not a surprise that we don't see many examples of old and grey predators living past what one can consider the predator retirement age where they no longer hunt and just live out the rest of the days on their home planet. However, knowing the temperament of predators and their inherent thirst for combat, a desire to hunt down and kill whatever prey they consider to be the strongest, and seeing their battle victories as a sign of power and honour, it is highly probable that they keep venturing out on hunts and one day meet a foe they cannot defeat. However, the predator race has been known to exist for numerous millennia, and predators can apparently live for at least several centuries. Since no predator has ever managed to survive the events of a predator movie, they frequently perish on their hunts and are killed in battle. However, if not killed in battle, they show signs of aging as their skin ages and their dreadlocks go grey, just like humans. Additionally, seasoned predators frequently have numerous scars and may be missing an eye, a tusk, or a limb, this can go to show the sheer number of battles a predator has been in and come out alive, pointing out to their mature age and wealth of combat experience. They definitely do not age at the same speed as humans do, because their average lifespan is far longer than that of a regular human, but they still show physical signs of aging. However, it is not only physical changes that accompany their increase in age. While their reflexes and strength may deteriorate with age, their minds are still keen and the experience offers them a significant advantage over their rivals. In fact, older predators are often thought to be better at combat than younger ones because the younger they are, the more hot-headed they are, not having much experience of the hunt and how to conduct themselves. However, when they grow older and gain some experience, they understand the rules of combat and battle and are much more level-headed, having lived through various battles. There are some examples of old and aged predators in Predator lore and franchise. The ancient predator from Predator Homeworld, who defeated three juvenile bad blood Yaojas in a single encounter, is one of the oldest known Yaoja. Interestingly, one of the oldest members of the species and a recurring character in Predator media is Kalakta. It is made known that Kalakta is incredibly old old and can recall all of the Predator's previous wars. This suggests that Predators have extraordinarily lengthy lifespans which could help to explain the abundance of blood in Concrete Jungle, the 2005 action video game. Everything you need to know about Yaoja reproduction. Well, while predators reproduce because obviously they keep spawning and coming to the earth to hunt, not much is known about how they reproduce. This could be because people don't want to know or think it is irrelevant. However, for those who want to know, remember, curiosity killed the cat but satisfaction brought it back. So here it goes, everything you need to know about how predators reproduce. Now we know that face huggers are used by the xenomorphs to impregnate other creatures in order to reproduce. Further, despite the fact that we have witnessed predators being impregnated by face huggers, which resulted in the dreaded predalien, the predators appear to reproduce in more normal ways. The predators are obviously bipedal beasts that resemble humans in many ways. They most likely have sexual reproduction like like humans, considering that the predator females bear a striking resemblance to human females. Contrary to popular belief, there are male predators and female predators. I know that we don't see female predators much, but they are definitely there. Cleopatra is one such iconic female predator who appears in the franchise. Although it appears that all of the predators in the movies are male, there could be a variety of explanations for this. It's possible that females of the species will react poorly to space travel. The ladies could merely be regarded as brood mares. However, I think it's just as plausible that the female of the species is in charge of the predator society. They rule, make all the crucial choices, create all the technology, and rear the children. 
Males are solely needed for reproduction; otherwise, they are dispatched to play on other planets. This is just a theory, though. What do you think? Intriguing, right? It is important to note that the distinctions between male and female predators are not always clear. This is because they have been presented in various ways. In some media, like the comic book miniseries *Aliens: Predator: The Deadliest of Species*, female predators have been depicted without clothing and are essentially indistinguishable from their male counterparts. Various publications have portrayed female predators as having larger hips and breasts than their male counterparts, implying that they share similarities with how the human sexes are represented. Another major question that surrounds predator reproduction is: Can predators mate with humans to produce offspring? Well, let us take for example the storyline in which Machiko Noguchi, a human, is given permission to join a predator clan in the comic books and novels about aliens versus predator after assisting in the capture of an alien queen. The predators in Machiko's clan treat her as an outcast, which eventually leads to her defection and return to humanity. We find that predators have no physical interest in humanoids during Machiko Noguchi's time with her clan because Noguchi even teases one of her rivals by suggesting that he wants to breed with her. So conclusively, a predator can mate with a human if they want, I guess, but they are most likely not able to breed or sire children. And I say most likely because anything can happen in the future iterations. The best way to look at this is by taking into account basic DNA knowledge, genetics, and Science. For example, the reason we as humans cannot breed with chimpanzees, even though they are quite similar to us with regards to genetic makeup, is that they have a different number of chromosomes in comparison to humans. So, considering that half of the genetic material has to come from the male and the other half from the female, this incompatibility makes sure that breeding isn't normally possible. Further, chimpanzees are from Earth and share a fairly close genetic makeup to humans. Predators, on the other hand, are From a completely different planet. In fact, predators have different genetic structures. Their blood is literally green, so it would be next to impossible for them to breed with humans organically. Further, predators are conquerors, so they would have already bred with humans to create a predator race that was more suited and adapted to Earth's climate, if it was possible. He's marking himself. Predators can be polyamorous. We haven't seen many romance tales featuring the predators because most of their appearances have included stalking and attacking. They are clearly not the romantic type, but the question is, are they monogamous or polyamorous? According to the tales that have been written about predator culture, the species is polyamorous, with famous hunters attracting lots of spouses, while the predator equivalent of geeks are left without any. This explains why predators are so driven to win glory on the battlefield. More victories equals more women and more sexual partners. Monogamy isn't a law or norm in their society. Thus, there is no such thing as marriage or even mating for life. They do as they please and well, do the deed with whomever they please. Physical prowess is a big deal in predator society. So the more successful one is in battle, the more sexual partners they are likely to have. To put it simply, strength is the name of the game. The predators are also renowned for having a high birth rate. It is reported that during the course of their lifespan, predators frequently have over 60 offspring, which is insane when compared to humans. However, it is never made clear whether female predators have a litter of offspring or whether their gestation period is much shorter than that of humans. Predators thus mate vigorously and with various other predators, making them poly. Amorous. The mystery behind the predator dreadlocks. The predator is an unstoppable alien assassin. Thus, it's unlikely that it will listen to advice about clothing from a person. If they did, it might have been suggested that they cut their dreadlocks, since when they leave the house looking like Bob Marley, it detracts from their entire alien threat impression. Their dreadlocks have, in fact. Been a source of major fascination. Fans have wondered what exactly they are, what purpose they serve, and why they look like that. 
These braid-like extensions do superficially resemble human hair. The length and style of the braids, as well as the color of the dreadlocks, vary from person to person. Nevertheless, despite their resemblance to hair, dreadlocks are not hair at all and have a unique purpose. The dreadlocks were referred to as quills by Stan Winston, the special makeup effects inventor and special effects supervisor who created the original Predator. Winston imagined the dreadlocks to resemble feather and porcupine quills. However, many viewers now think that the creature's frequent multimedia appearances have led them to believe that the creature's quills are more ornamental than practical and operate similarly to human hair. Actually, nothing could be further from the truth. The predator's dreadlocks constitute a crucial component of their sensory apparatus. The hair-like appendages are flesh and blood-sensing organs, as revealed by the Predator comic books, video games, and novels expanded universe. They are essential to Yaoja awareness and bleed when severed. These improved senses contribute to the explanation of why the Yaoja possess exceptional reflexes, balance, and hunting skills, despite lacking their high-tech armor, weapons, and devices depicted in the movies. Further, predators are renowned for having long dreadlocks, which represent hair in Yaoja culture. They can be groomed and decorated just like real hair. However, according to some sources, Yaoja dreadlocks actually have blood running inside of them, making it difficult to cut them. Even though it was against their will, some predators have had their dreadlocks cut. For instance, as part of a brainwashing effort to turn the kidnapped Stoneheart Predator against his brethren, all of his dreadlocks were cut off. In elder or more ancient predators, the dreadlocks age like those of humans and become grey or white in hue. The Shaman Predator, a member of the Lost Tribe of Predators, is one of the predators with the longest known dreadlocks. Further, the Hunter's Planet book showed that predator's hair is handled similarly to how Dothraki's hair is handled in Game of Thrones. Short dreadlocks are viewed as ugly by the female of the species, and the length of the predator's dreadlocks is believed to signify their combat prowess and attractiveness as a mate. Mystery solved. Predators can fly into berserker rage. There are differences within the species of predators that have talents unique from those of other predators of their kind, proving that not all predators are created equal, as evidenced by the various different predators we have come across in comics, video games, and movies. One type of predator has a unique gland between the neck and collarbone that pumps certain hormones into the bloodstream to strengthen the body. To obtain or even unlock great strength, the predator will willingly lose control over their behavior. This blood rage is distinct since it may be transmitted to other predators. Even though they do not have the unique glands themselves, other predators will experience a similar berserker rage if the gland is active for an extended period of time. Most often, the term berserker rage refers to Viking warriors called berserkers who were able to fight in a nearly uncontrollable trance-like fury. In comic books, berserker rages are frequently depicted, usually when a lone warrior faces impossible challenges and draws on a secret reservoir of untapped rage and might. Turns out that predators can thus also fly into a berserker rage. Exploring the nature of predator blood. A vivid green bioluminescent fluid makes up the predator blood. Gaucha. Blood is thought to be more alkaline than xenomorph blood, which can be acidic and thus can even counteract some of the effects of the alien acid that can come in touch with the predators during a fight. The predators can lose a significant amount of blood and still function well enough to continue battling their opponent. The Yaucha blood is warm like human blood, suggesting that they are warm-blooded beasts. However, it is also possible that the thermal netting was warming the Yaucha's body and consequently their blood. Their blood has also been described as sweet-smelling. Some sources also claim that if used as a serum for people, it has therapeutic properties. In fact, the idea that humans have come into contact with the extraterrestrial hunters throughout the history has been back and forth in numerous Predator movies and comic books. You would assume that someone would have written something about their experience of being pursued by an alien warrior. As it turns out, keeping written records is not necessary because running into a Predator can increase your lifespan. If you managed to kill it and did not 
die in the process yourself. Hunter Borgia, who used the blood to keep himself alive for an entire century, was the first person to discover this particular property of predator blood. However, in order for one to live, the blood must be continuously used and consumed. Another person who consumed hunters to stay young was Lee Yat-sen, but he would take full organs from the Yaocha rather than just their blood and consume it. According to the video game Predator Concrete Jungle as well, ingesting a predator's blood can lengthen your life since it causes your aging process to stall out. This doesn't make you immortal because you'll still age and eventually pass away from old age. Interestingly, the feral predator, which is more adapted to a desert-based environment than other Yaocha, has various distinctive adaptations not seen in other Yaocha, including its blood. Therefore, it would appear that evolution plays a specific role in the predator's blood. Although the blood of the feral predator is green, it differs from the blood of other Yaojas in that it is a darker shade of green and appears to be less bright. The blood can also occasionally be mostly liquid and rather chunky, which is another characteristic. Fun fact, for filming, the Predator's characteristic glowing blood was made by combining KY jelly lubricant with the contents of light sticks. The glow stick combination needs to be freshly prepared on set because it only retains its glow for a brief period of time. Oh shit. Why are they driven to hunt humans? By this point, we have witnessed numerous encounters with predators and human mercenaries over the years. We've discovered that the Yaocha are a race completely fascinated with the thrill and prestige of the hunt, and in particular with hunting creatures that can hunt them back, as can be gleaned from the main Predator films, the crossover Alien vs. Predator spin-offs, and expanded canon from the comics and novels. Predators have thus not learned to avoid Earth, despite the fact that humans have repeatedly repeatedly fought them over the years. In reality, it has only increased their interest in us. When Dark Horse Comics started publishing the Aliens vs. Predator comic book series in 1989, they fulfilled the fantasies of many horror fans. This comic book series eventually resulted in the criminally underappreciated crossover movie. In the comic's first issue, which introduces the primary plot, the story opens with a debate between two men on a space mining ship over whether or not mankind has become overly reliant on technology. We see images of Yaoja prepping their armory of sophisticated hunting tools as one man tells the other that we have ceased utilizing things as means to an end and instead have made them into the end itself. We then see the predators fighting to death over a little disagreement while the dialogue claims that we, humans, have lost touch with our primitive nature. The subtext is that humans should strive to be like the predators, at least from the viewpoint of that one extremely vicious individual. They use technology, yes, but not exclusively. Even though they are advanced, they still seem to settle disputes by using physical prowess. They are both quite primitive and futuristic. The comic thus implies that the predators seek humans out as a means of demonstrating to themselves that they have not lost sight of their origins and turned solely to their weapons. As Dutch points out in the first Predator movie, even when they are close to winning, they will stop to let humans pick up weapons and won't kill them when they are defenseless. This is because killing defenseless prey is not sport, it is not exciting or thrilling for them, and it is also of no use bragging about killing a defenseless prey since there is no honor or valor in it. Indeed, every time a predator comes into contact with a human in a movie, there is at least one scenario in which the predator decides to battle the human without using any weapons. This appears to be the aliens' attempt to demonstrate that despite their superior technology, they are still powerful enough to kill humanity with their bare hand. Of course, when they boast about their strength, it usually ends up badly for them. But that's simply good news for the human they're fighting. Additionally, the Predator from 2018 demonstrated the lengths the Yaocha would go in order to become the most powerful Predator in the galaxy. We learned from that film that the Predators have started fusing their DNA with that of other animals in an effort to better themselves. Two Yaocha were introduced in the Predator, making them both even deadlier than before thanks to human DNA augmentation. Maybe the Xenomorph, one of their other favorite preys, gave them this idea. A Xenomorph from Aliens vs. Predator Requiem gave birth to a Yaocha, resulting in a hybrid of the two species. To sum up their mindset, if you are unable to defeat them, 
and are unwilling to join them consider stealing their genetic makeup in an effort to understand what makes them unique. The Predator novels, on the other hand, emphasize that predators hunt us because of our reliance on technology. Author Paul Monnet introduces the titular extraterrestrial hunter as he is trailing and observing a squad of soldiers concentrating on their camouflage and heavy weaponry in novelization of the first Predator film. The Predator was allegedly intrigued and motivated to hunt troops by the sight of a being that had been altered and trained expressly to kill. Monnet penned, a kindred spirit at least, a reason to exist. Because we are prepared to employ tools to help us kill and rule over other creatures, the Yautja view us as worthy prey or even opponents even though they are aware that they are more advanced than us. Perhaps the best illustration of this is a small crossover comic book called Batman vs Predator. A Yautja arrives in Gotham City in search of deserving prey, but isn't truly content until it encounters the caped crusader. Who better than Batman, in my opinion, if you want a foe who pushes themselves and changes themselves to become a better warrior? Just in that one comic, Batman defeats the Predator by using a sonar exoskeleton suit to improve his strength and a number of new tools. Further, according to the novelization of the comic book series Aliens vs Predator Prey, the Predators despise humans because of their craftiness and cunning. They also used us as the basis for bedtime stories to frighten Yaucha kids. The essence of the franchise, which has always been about the skilled alien hunter underestimating their target, is directly impacted by this. I want off this planet. You understand me? How can humans communicate with predators? Because they have mastered interplanetary travel and have weaponry technology that is considerably superior to that of humans, it is obvious that the predators are a member of an advanced species. However, they are not known to talk much. So, how do they communicate? And more importantly, how can they communicate with us humans? Predators have their own written and spoken languages, the former of which sounds like a collection of clicks, roars, snarls and growls. Additionally, they speak dialects that differ from the Yauja common speech so drastically that translators struggle to understand them. The dash pattern used to express the written language is comparable in both shape and function to many Earth-based languages. These written symbols can be found on the monsters, helmets, gauntlet displays, buildings, and a variety of other surfaces. Predators further frequently mimic spoken human language that they hear. Although it is uncertain to what extent the Yauja can understand this speech, it is known that the beasts have observed repeating words at ostensibly appropriate moments in order to communicate with their prey. On rare occasions, older predators with more contact with people have been reported to actually pick up some limited English language skills. There is evidence that the Yauja are also capable of understanding humor. For instance, the predator Scar purposefully induced a dead xenomorph to blast out its inner jaw and scare Lex during the events on Bouvet Island and it appears that Scar found Lex's fright and astonishment amusing. The predator counterpart of a belly laugh, according to Machiko Noguchi, is the fast clicking of time. She also claims that laughter is universal, even among members of their species. Furthermore, although individual Yauchas generate a variety of sounds, as the jungle and city hunter showed, one of the most frequent sounds they emit is a high-pitched human-like cry, especially when using their medikits to treat their wounds. Most importantly, humans and Yaucha have been known to communicate successfully via sign language. In fact, the predator race has created its own system of sign language that enables silent communication in combat. In Alien vs Predator 3 World War, it was revealed that they were willing to teach humans this sign language in order to improve communication between predators and the individuals who are accepted into predator clans. If you're a Predator fan, I hope this video served as your little guide to all things about the Predator's fascinating anatomy. The fact that there is so much about them that the regular moviegoer does not know simply shows how vast Predator lore, canon and even non-canon stories are. Did we miss anything? Which aspect of their anatomy really surprised you? Tell us in the comment section below. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone. What are you? Shut the fuck up.